a circuit has resistors 20 ohms, 10 ohms, and another 10 ohms, a 10 microfarad capacitor, a battery, and shown in the figure. Assume the capacitor is a, par is a parallel plate capacitor and initially starts off uncharged. Okay, those are good assumptions. I'm going to write some of these in real quick to complete the picture. 20 ohms, call this 10 ohms, call this one 10 ohms, and this will be 5 volts. Okay? At time t equals 0, the switch S1, shown right there, is closed. Immediately after the switch is closed, what is the current through resistor R3? Okay, so when I do capacitors and capacitors inductors, I use the hydro the idea of the hydraulic analogy, and you can look it up, Wikipedia hydraulic analogy, it's great. Um, is you view current as water, you res view resistors as like filters that oppose the motion of water, and then you view capacitors as diaphragms, which initially provide no resistance but then stretch, and then you look at inductors, which we don't have in this problem, as a water wheel. It works out really well from an intuitive point of view. So, not perfect, but I like it. So, t equals zero. We have switch S1 close, click. Current comes through here, and the capacitor is going to offer no initial resistance. So, if you think of it as a diaphragm, like this in a pipe, water pushes this way, it stretches a little bit, but the um, stretching initially when it's unstretched provides no resistance so water pushes here which pushes the water there which just pushes which just goes on through with zero, no resistance so this point right here that capacitor right there is as if it's a short if it's just a straight wire and so the more technical way to think of it i know it's negative charges in the negative direction but we're going to assume positive charges in the positive direction here so we have positive charges come here we have positive charges come there which attracts negative charges over here. And as the negative charges move that way, that's the same thing as positive charges moving the other direction. And when there's no initial, I guess, surplus of charges there, the, char the positive charges don't have any um, trouble piling up there. And so there's no resistance at that point. That's the same idea as an unstretched diaphragm. Long story short, you just want to memorize that a capacitor will initially, an uncharged capacitor, will initially provide no resistance to flow. It can be modeled as a short. So current is going to come up here, go through that resistor, and then go straight down, completely bypass R3. You might be like, what? Why would it bypass? Well, you can look at this as a zero ohm resistor if you want. And you do one over R equivalent equals one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one over this middle one, which is zero. 1 over 0, infinity, and then when you find R equivalent, you find, let me see, 0, probably 0. So you find have no resistance with equivalent resistance, and you figure out that, oh, all the current's going to go through the, the short wire. So, long story short, click, clack. Immediately after the switch is closed, what is the current through resistor R3? I going through R3 equals zero. Okay, sounds good. Got that after a very long time. So capacitors charge up. What this is saying is this has come at basically an equilibrium. So when you see the charges building up on the capacitor, this will be charges max, and it'll look something kind of like bloom, like that, where it'll uh, approach the maximum but never quite get there. So when they say a long time, it's just like, Assume the charges are at maximum. So at ma at time t equals zero, you can model a capacitor as a short, as a line. At time t equals infinity, you can model a um, capacitor as an open. So there's no current flowing through it. It is completely saturated with positive charges here and completely saturated with negative charges there. Therefore, you have nothing. Um, if you think of it from the... Uh, hydraulic um, hydraulic analogy, you think of it as the diaphragm where you have the pressure of the water pushing this way, but it's already stretched so it's not pushing any more water going through. So after a very long time, was the potential at point A, right there, in the figure relative to the negative terminal on the battery. So I'm going to redraw this real quick. 
And I'm basically just going to leave off the capacitor. So we have one, two, we have R1. And then we have another couple R's over here. And we have 20, and we have two tens. Well, when you have two resistors that are the same in parallel, the equivalent resistance, you can do it by finding a reciprocal of adding reciprocals, the way you do parallel resistors. Or you can just know if they're the same and divide them by half. So that'll be 5, 20. Ooh, that's cool. And then we're going to find the voltage at that point. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find current. Hmm. So voltage drop. Let's see here. I'm going to start by finding the current. There's probably a quicker way to do this. But current equals, or, yeah, current equals V over R. So V is 5, and the total resistance will be 20 plus 5 will be 25, which will be 1 fifth. So we have a current of uh, 1 fifth amp going this way. So if we want to find the voltage drop across the first resistor, the voltage drop would be V equals IR, which would be 1 fifth times 20, which would be 4. 4 volts. So the voltage drop across here is 4 volts, so we have 5 volts. 4 volts, and then we assume that it goes down to, oh no, drop of 4 volts goes down to 1 volt, and then we get down to 0 volts when we get back to the beginning of the battery. So, after a very long time, what is the potential at point A, shown in the figure, relative to the negative terminal of the battery? I'm going to call that 1 volt, because we assume that the capacitor is open, no current flowing through. And then we just break down this circuit and then analyze it the way we would analyze a circuit normally. And we find the voltage drop across the first resistor and subtract that from the total. Or we find the voltage drop across the last resistor and add that to the final voltage, which would be zero. So either way, we get one volt. Excellent. In a very long time, what is the charge on the capacitor? Good question, good question. So, um... The charge on a capacitor, Q, is this is a formula, capacitance times voltage. And so after a very long time, so we have 5 volts here, 1 volt here, 0 volts here. So the voltage difference across the capacitor will be 1 volt. And the capacitance will be 10 microfarads. So we have 10 times 10 to the negative 6 farads times 1 volt, and this will give us 10 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, which I'm going to call 10 microcoulombs. Make sure that's right. 10 microfarad, 10 microcoulombs. So the answer for this one will be 10 microcoulombs. Oh, not too bad so far, right? Let's keep going. So now, at a very, at a very long time, again, allowing the... Um, capacitor to charge or discharge fully. We have a dielectric of constant K equals 1.5 is inserted into the capacitor. Okay, so it's going to change the capacitance of the capacitor after waiting another very long time to allow everything to stabilize. What is the potential across the capacitor and how much charge is stored in the capacitor? Okay, so before we had 10.5, so now we're changing the capacitor. So the way this changes is Capacitance equals some whatever innate uh, vacuum without dielectric capacitance you have times K. I'm going to assume that initially this is this initial part was with some sort of initial capacitance. So don't get this initial capacitance here because that symbolizes capacitance. That symbolizes Coulomb. The unit and the dimension are different. So don't get, let that confuse you. So now uh, capacitance final, I'm going to call it or capac yeah, capacitance final, equals, um, let's see, we hit, what, is, what is the charge? We had 10.0 farads, so 10 times 10 to the negative 6 times 1.5, which will be 15 times 10 to the negative 6 farads, okay? So now we're going to go back to Q equals CV. Now we want to know how much charge is on it now. And that is, bum, 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 let's see here, Q equals C, which is 15 times 10 to the negative 6. We still have the 1 volt, 
So that's going to be times 1. And so now we're going to be up to 15 microcoulombs for that, for the charge. Okay, so by putting in the um, dielectric, it feels kind of like we gained some energy here. Um, I feel like we gained it magically. I assure you we did not. That energy came from the effort that would be required to physically insert the dielectric. So if you start calculating the energies, that's where the energy comes from, not magic. Well, I guess you kind of say everything in life is magic, but this is not magic. That's unusual from everyday miracles. Okay, a very long time after the dielectric inserted, again, letting everything kind of stabilize. Now, switch S1 is opened. So it looks like the figure. Okay. What is the current through R2 immediately after switch is opened? Okay. So go back to the idea of a diaphragm. You have some rubber diaphragm that's stretched this way. All of a sudden it's cut off. This, this is opened. And so now all the energy stored in this spring is going to go back this way. From a more realistic point of view, we have all these positive charges here that they don't want to be next to each other, but they're kind of forced to by the battery. Once you open S1, that battery is no longer forcing them to be there, and they're going to go over to this side to even out. And so you're going to have current flowing in this way. You might be like, well, why doesn't it flow over this way towards the battery? It doesn't because it can't get all the way back around. This is trying to even itself out. And so it's going to come up this way, down that way. And what it's going to do is this um, capacitor is going to act as a battery and the voltage that it was maintaining uh, going, pushing it this way, it's going to be going backwards. So before we had a one volt on top, zero volt on bottom, now we're going to have a one volt on bottom, zero volt on top. And that's just going to be just immediately. As the capacitor winds down, the voltage will drop. It'll just drop exponentially, kind of bloop, so to speak. So we have two resistors, each of 10 ohms, and so that's going to be, if I draw this as an equivalent battery here, two resistors again in parallel that are the same will be some, the equivalent to a resistor that's half. So two tens will be the same as one five. And we have a one volt equivalent battery. And so let's see, I equals VR. That will be voltage, which is one divided by five, which is 0.2 amps. So we have 0.2 amps coming out of the battery. Ha uh, since R2 and R3 are the same, it'll split off and half will go one way, half will go the other way. So I, oh, put it over here. I through, is it say R2 or R3? R2 would equal one tenth amp. Eh, not too bad. Mm, yep, I think we got that. Go team, go team. All right, move this up a little bit. So now, how much time will pass from opening switch S1 until the capacitor is half the charge it had before the switch was opened? Okay. So again, we're going to go draw the graph. So the graph is going to be this way. Uh, it's asking about charge. So it's going to start at some charge max, and it's going to die down exponentially. And the exponential, so Q equals, I'm going to call it Q max times hmm, E to the negative T over RC. So this is called the time constant, RC for um, uh, when you're working with capacitors. And this is just how quickly it's going to die down. And so Q max, our initial Q, we decided was 15 microcoulombs. So we have... 15 microcoulombs. Actually, I'm not even going to do that because this said one half, right? Uh, half the charge it had before the switch is open. So this is going to be, this Q here is going to be Q max over 2. This is going to be Q max. Then we have E to the negative T, which is a mystery. R, which is, look back at this right here, it's going to be 5 because that'll be the resistor. This is like an RC circuit, times the capacitance, which we decided was 15 microfarads, because we have the dielectric in it still. So 15 times 10 to the negative 6. I know, big, 
my exponent, exponents aren't drawn well. So the Qmax um, both cancel. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, go to E, and we have natural log of one half negative equals T, and then we're going to have divided by that, but I'm going to multiply it, okay, I'll divide it over here so we can see what's going on. Oop. 5 times 15 times 10 to negative 6. Rearranging things slightly, we have t equals 5 times 15 times 10 to the negative 6th minus times natural log of 1 half. And this is probably going to give us something small. You might be worried about that negative. You're like, well, am I, I going to get a negative time? No, because the natural log of a fraction is uh, negative number as well. So it'll all work out. At least the negative will. Can't really vouch for the rest. 5 times 15 times 10 to the negative 6 times natural log of, and I'm just going to do 0.5 instead of 1 half. Same thing. And we get, hmm, oh, because I forgot the negative, times negative 1. Okay, 5 point, I'm going to call that 52 times 10 to the negative 6th, uh, 5.198 times 10 to the negative 5th. Yep, that seems reasonable. I think there's probably an 8 in there. So then I can do multiply by 10 to the negative 1 times 10, and that gives us 52 microseconds. Yep, I'll actually I'll draw it like that. Micro times 10 to the negative 6. Yep, I'm happy with that. Happy with that. So 52 microseconds. So this will be 52 microseconds. This is in con similar concept to um, half-life when you think talking about radiation. Okay, pretty good. And that looks like the answer to the last question. So to kind of recap what we did, we had a capacitor here. We charged it up. And then once it was fully charged, we put in a dielectric, which changed the capacitance. We then open the switch, and that caused the current to flow backwards, which we could which we could measure that current. And then we also then calculated how much with the exponential decay. So not too bad. Hope that helped with this problem. See you next time.